but as far as performance or anything, you know, it's just like stepping on an old rotten peach on the floor if you're going to take off and go somewhere. You go, woo, and then pretty soon you go. Yeah. <laughs> We're just up the block at the Wilson's house, uh, drag racing their uh, Dodge Polaris against our Challenger. And I just, like I always do, ask, well, where's somebody else around here that may have old cars? I said, well, if you go up the road about a mile, on the right side, you'll see old tractors and in the barn behind them, old cars as well. And so we drove past and didn't see it initially. Turned around, came back, and we found it. So we've met Bob Duvall. Bob, thanks for being yep. so uh, you know, hospitable to us, allowing us to come here. You know, you have cars and you have tractors. We've never featured tractors on this show. Would you mind if we started there? No, I don't care. And if we could just start with the one over here we saw and walk this way, that would yep. be great. I mean, I, I know enough to know that those are orchard tractors. Yep. That's all I know. And Case is the brand. That's your that's your brand. That's my brand. One of my first jobs I had was working at a Case dealer out on Old Mission Peninsula. No kidding. Yeah. Tell me why it has these these fairings here. Those fairings is when you're going down through the orchards, um, the fruits hanging on the tree and the limbs are hanging down. Where you're going down through here like that, the branches hit and they go right right up over here. And this cowling here. You got a place to get down, and so you don't get wiped off the back of the track with apples or whatever. Apples or cherries or whatever the branches mainly. And what are you doing? Are you mowing, or what are you doing when you're riding through? Cultivated, kept the grass out. So you, that's basically what you were doing. This tractor, I think, is a, this one's a '52, 1952. Really? This tractor comes from over on the Door Peninsula. So if you wanted to buy a tractor in this condition so you could fix it up at home, what could you expect to pay for a tractor like that? Tractor like that, just sitting like that with the tire, all good tires on. Tires is the answer to everything on no tractors. Kidding. Fair price for that tractor would be about $2,800, mm -hmm. just the way it's set. That's if it ran. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't run, then, then, you know, it's kind of a ball game, you know. So but, does that motor have a... A, a life out, outside of case, or is that a case-built engine? That's a case-built engine, and uh, this is a case SO. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was used in the SO series, um, the S series, anything with an S on it. I'm looking at a bird sitting on... That's, that a, the, that's the eagle sitting on the magneto. Huh. That's a case-manufactured magneto. So, yeah. okay, this is a 52. Yep. It, it looks the same, kind of. As well, they are. They're... This is an SO also. Mm -hmm. This one's a 49. Ooh. This was an export tractor meant to be shipped out of the country. In, in 1949, Case made 40 of them. Out of the 40, I've got two of them. And I know where the rest <laughs> of them are. How many made it out of the country? Um, we know of five that did not. So that one has a case like an emblem. This probably yep. had an emblem. It's supposed to have one here. But this one, is, it's cast in. Yep. This is a 1939 case model R. There are not a lot of these made. They're a smaller tractor than what that are, and they're an earlier tractor. And it's got, different the engine's engine. reversed. The, well, the magnetor's on this yep, side. Yeah, but it's a different engine entirely. Got it. Oh, it's a flathead. This, this is a Waukesha engine in this mm -hmm. one. Case did not make this engine. So this is an earlier one? This is an earlier one. This is a 1939, this one. Now, um, what make what they call a Starburst grill mm -hmm. is this cast iron grill. They, they made that in 39. They're very collectible with that Starburst grill. Is this crank start only? That's crank start only on that one. Mm -hmm. So this is a case, but very different. This is a RC. It has a single front wheel. Mm -hmm. And what would that be for? Gardens, a cultivator tractor. Mm -hmm. Go down through the corn or the beans or whatever. It has cultivators that will mount on it. And here's the eagle again. There's the, there's the eagle again. Huh. And this, this, I mean, the radiators are not that, like a car radiator. These are cast iron. That's cast iron up there, yeah. Uh -huh. So you, you welded it yourself? Yeah. So what did you say when I walked up? If, it, if I can't do it, it doesn't get done. That's right. That's right. So I heard you have some cars here as well. Yeah, we got got a few cars. Okay, let's take a look. So this looks like a Model A. This is a Model two, A. Two door. Two door. This originally belonged to my father-in-law. My wife learned to drive on this car. Oh, that's a sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, I like the seats. Yeah. Very nice. LeBaron Bonnie. 
They're not in business anymore. I know it. I know it. So, so that's 30, 31? 30. Uh -huh. The original top, even. From the factory? From the factory. Wow. Yeah. So other than this, well, you got another Ford there, but you're a Chevy guy, it looks like. Well, yes and no. <laughs> Pretty much Chevy. I worked for Chevrolet Garage for 50 years to the day. 50 years to the day. That was my goal. This is like a 39? This is a 41. 41, okay. Or 40. 40. Yeah, this one's a 40. Yeah. And these are running forever. And these straight sixes just straight run Straight sixes, yeah. 216, is it? Yep, 216 in there. 36, 36 Chevy. Master. What a beauty. So that's got that complicated front suspension. <laughs> Knee, action. Knee action. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Mm. Yeah. And you restored that? They restored that one also. Orange pinstripe. I love it. Yeah. So that's like a 49 or a 50 Chevy? This is a 1950. 50. And you got that beautiful fastback. Yep. Oh, I love it. When I bought it, it had really tough mileage on it. It had 7,400 miles on it. And it's clear up to 11,000 already. From new? From new. Man. Yep. Must be a sweetheart to drive. It's fun to drive, but as far as performance or anything, you know. Yeah. So that's a 50 as well, but that's a two-door sedan. That's two-door sedan. And that's a fastback. Yep. You never see them side by side. Yep. Nice. And so is that a Model A over in the corner? You got yep. 20, 29, 28? That's a 29 over in the corner. That was our second car shortly after wife and I got married. She drove that everywhere, took the kids swimming lessons, picked them up at the school bus. Yep. Was so is that a 53? This is a 53 Ford. So it's either got a, or it's got a V8 flathead. Last of the flatheads. Yep. yep. I had to have one of them. There's nothing runs like a flathead. Yeah. Nice that, truck. Yep. That was originally a California truck. Whoa. This Jeez. is nice, runs nice, drives nice. Yep. And I think it's going to see daylight here in the next week or so. Again. Maybe I'll it's, come it, back. It, it's been in here for, I don't know, four or five years now. Uh -huh. Oh, look at that. Now, what year is this one? Oh, and there's the Eagle on the front. Yep. This is a case, what they call a cross motor. This is about a 1920. Look at those rods and pistons. My God. Yeah. Whew. Not a lot of these left anymore. Mm -hmm. So clearly, tractors are your thing. Do you have a, do you have a favorite tractor? Is there, if I took all your tractors away and said you could have one back, which one would it be, you think? Well, right right now it'd probably be this one. Yep. And the reason for that is what? Well, grandson. He was about this big. <laughs> we went to an auction down by Kingsley. That tractor was there, ready to sell it. And I tried to get him off. He just screamed, raising a real ruckus, you know. You know how kids are. <laughs> so I had to buy it. Yeah. And is, are those future projects, parts vehicles? Oh no, these are all, this is all running stuff. All running stuff. Here's another one of those cross motors. We can uncover this one. So if you think about it, you know, a generally a tractor uh, or a, front, a rear wheel drive car, you have an engine that's kind of longitudinal. But this one, interestingly, has a, an engine that's sideways. So I guess it depends on how the differential was set up. This might be easier. You wouldn't have to have a, a ring and pinion if you ran it off, a, I guess, a belt or a chain. How, what's, the, what's the drive on this thing? Is it a belt or a chain or something? Uh, no, it's all gear. All gear. Okay. All gear. Mm. Mm. Well, that motor's not going anywhere fast. No, this, <laughs> this, one's, this one's stuck. Uh -huh. So that's a big four cylinder. Well, how big is that motor? I don't know what the cubic inch on it. The pistons in it are about four and three eighths inch. And the stroke's about that long. Torque. Torque. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a low RPM engine. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if, it, if it hit 900 RPM, that'd probably be wide open, really? 900. I don't think it'd go over 1,000. Man. Is there a tractor here you can start? Yeah, yeah, we got some that's easy to start. So on this one, the front track and the rear track are the same. Yep. But on the single wheel, they work on different rows. Yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. This this is a VAC. I think this is a 1948. Wow. But this one this one starts pretty good. But if you notice here on an orchard tractor, look look how low you set. Yeah. Look at that. Right on the differential. Yeah. Yeah. You set down like that. When I set in there, you just barely see the top of my head. You see? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm so low. Let's start. If I can figure out how to start this thing. <laughs> oh, 
Unbelievable. So you know, did, when you drove that, you might have to duck so you don't get slammed yep, in the face? Yeah. Down, get down like this so <laughs> stuff goes over your head. What, so this has a low compression ratio, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right here in your clutch. Ah. There's your brake. I'm going to drive it, right? Yeah. Today's just like a lawnmower, you get off the seat and it quits. Just by coincidence. Today's a day of a lot of fir <laughs> a lot of firsts today. A lot of firsts. I've never drag raced. I've never driven a tractor. So. Yeah. So orchard tractors are your thing. Is that do you is that like people have different specialties? Yeah, yep. Grandson, like he he's a garden tractor guy. He's got over a hundred of them here somewhere. He thinks he's gotta have one every one every year they made one. Wow. In each model. And I of a case. Yeah. Huh. We have a neat collection. So look at all these little tractors. So Ingersoll, is that Ingersoll Rand? Uh, no, it's Ingersoll. It, uh, it's a company that bought out case huh. uh, on the garden tractor part. Mm -hmm. And these are all different years? Or not Pro necessarily? Probably they are. This is mostly the parts tractor <laughs> back here. And there's even a John Deere hid way back <laughs> there where nobody knows I got it. <laughs> yeah. There's an international orchard tractor there. It's mm -hmm. a 04. What beautiful fenders they are. Yeah. So those fenders, they're made on, a, on like an English wheel? Yep. I guess so. You know, that, I, I don't know how else they'd make them. Yeah, all well, those compact curves. And how, when did K, is Case still in business? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's Case IH now. That's right, yeah. Um, Case bought international out when they were going under. So this is, what brand is this? That, that's a case. That's uh -huh. the same as that rusty one. Uh -huh. what, what's kind of unique to me on that one, when that tractor was brand new, I was the one that did the inspection on it when it come off the truck before the new owner got it. And what year was that? That's in 1952. And you inspected that? Yeah. Man. Yep. I got the, I've what got were you, it. like three years old? No, I was older than that. <laughs> I was probably around 10 at that time, eight, and maybe nine, 10, something Man. like that. But uh, then we got old Snort there. That tractor there, the fellow that owned that had a farm that adjoined our school out there on Old Mission Peninsula. I'd sit in class there and I'd watch him work in the rows of trees. They'd come right up, you know, probably from here to that building from our school. And that thing just be a snort and cut because it was uphill <laughs> all the way. He'd get up there and he'd whip that wheel and turn and go around. And, I, I watched that when I was in the sixth grade. I watched him running that track. And you wind up buying it. Yep, I am. And I pretty near missed it. Well, Bob, this is the first time we've spent time on anything but cars and trucks. Yep. One, one, we did one show on motorcycles. This is the first tractor show. So yep. thank you so much yep. for spending your afternoon with yep. us. Sometimes to find old cars, you got to drive across the United States, and sometimes you just have to go to the storage unit next door. The Haggerty Garage is literally, you know, 200 feet away, and this is a storage building that belongs to this man, Tony P. And Tony works for Haggerty, and we were just shooting the breeze with him the other day about, you know, any old cars? He said, "Hell, I got an old car in the garage." So we're about to see it. It's in it's in Unit 283, and. It's been apparently here for how many years? 28. 28? 28 years. 28 years, yeah. We put it here in 93. It hasn't been out since 93. No, sir. Man. 
Man. All right, let's see what it is. Mm. All right. So this cover's been on this thing a long time. Oh yeah, you can see the. All right. I'm gonna see if I can identify it without uh, taking the cover off. Uh, okay, it's got that bump in the hood. Uh, I think I know what it is. Let's see. A little rear spoiler. I'm thinking Pontiac or Buick. <laughs> it's got a notch back. Okay, so it's not one of those aero coupes. I'm saying a Buick. It's a Buick. It's a Buick. It's a Buick Regal, but it's kind of a special Buick. All right, look, you, you show us what it is. We just pull the cover off. Oh, Grand National, all right. Whoa. Is that original paint? Yes. Original paint, original tires, original wheels. It's uh, interior's all original. It was put away in here with, I believe, Close to 30 or just over 30,000 miles. Did you buy it new? Uh, my, no. Actually, my brother picked it up from the Detroit press pool. In 1984, it was out as a press pool car, and anybody could really check out the press pool cars. You didn't have to be in, in the core. Yeah, 31,000. 31,000. What year is it? It's 1984. It's the first year they made these. It's non-intercooled. And to my knowledge, I never really checked that much, but to my knowledge, they made around 1,800 of them. 84. 84. So is this the press pool sticker? Yeah, that's the press pool sticker. Is that right? Wow. So did you ever use it, or you just bought it and put no, it away? No, no. My brother bought it, and he used it Went summer, summers only. I knew I really liked the car. I knew what it was worth, so um, we put it in both of our names, and here it is. I mean, I've got a bunch of cars of my own, so I and other things in my life, boats, I never had time to even mess with it with all my other cars. But I am going to pull it out, and this is next on my bucket list. Pull it out, get it running, wash it, wax it. The paint's, the paint's in it's really good. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's really in great shape. There, if you look at it, there's absolutely no rust on this car at all. Those are the tires the car came with new. Yes. And they're still holding air after sitting here for that long. Amazing. Yes. I, I have not aired them up at all. Jeez. Well, here's the temporary temporary sticker. So we drove it from Detroit up here on a temporary, and that's when we put it away. 1993. Mm -hmm. So almost a quarter century ago. Can you show us the motor? Like, sure. Because this was a pretty special car, and I think people might not know much about this. Yes. This was one of the first American muscle cars to have a smaller engine and a turbocharger. Correct. The first cars of turbochargers, to my knowledge, are the Corvair and an Oldsmobile Starfire. Oh, but yeah. that was in the early 60s. This was 20 years after that. You know, this is a Regal, right? So when they first came out, nobody understood how much power they really made. Yep. So if you were out on the street racing, you get blown away by a, a Regal. And they didn't make any noise, right? Nope. Because <laughs> the turbocharger kind of ate up the noise, plus it was just a V6. Is yeah. that a 3.8 liter? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yep. And transmission's pretty much a 350 turbo? I'm not sure exactly what tranny they have in uh -huh. it, but whatever was standard for that year. I mean, they didn't really do anything different with the tranny. Yep. I mean, you can just see, it's just, it's yep. just a time capsule. Man, what does it say there? Computer controlled coil ignition. Huh. Man, this thing is fabulous. I would love to see this thing when it's all waxed up. I mean, it still feels like it's waxed. So you can see the, the turbo emblem embroidered on the seats here. If I'm not mistaken, those were Ricardo seats that they did that year. Because uh -huh. it had the yeah, yeah, pull up bolster, yeah. stuff like that. And Most storage cars smell musty and moldy. This smells dry and, and kind of a little bit of like. smoking. My brother had used to smoke a little bit. but um, You know, I like the fact it doesn't have a T-top, too, because those things kind of... Yeah. Got wonky. Wow. In its day, it was quick, but as you guys all know, when they came out with, in 87 with the intercooled, so they would turbocharge the air, run it through an air-to-air intercool, and it would drop the temperature. Mm -hmm. They were much faster. Like how much? Like how much? I think it's you, probably another 30 horse or so. Really? Yeah. Because you could pack more fuel Denser in dense fuel. air. Yeah. Because it was the first year, 
and they only made 1,800 of them. That's why we decided to just keep it, pack it away. And now the time has come, maybe in the next year or so, we may uh, get it out. And I'm trying to see if right around the corner at the video garage, you'll do a little DIY video on how to get a car running after 28 years. Oh, wouldn't so. that be cool? So your intention is to keep this, drive it, enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. My wife and I have always wanted to do Route 66. So that, that's the ultimate goal. Get it running, uh, clean it up, take it to Route 66, go all the way out to a, Santa Monica. Yeah, well, I've done it. It's a great trip, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to show us this. What a well, great time capsule. Thank you for... So thank you, sir. ...considering it. Yeah. And, you know, so let, 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 let this be a lesson. Like, if you're looking for old cars, mention it to everybody you know, because we just happened to mention it to Tony. By the way, we're looking... Do you know of any? Oh, you have one yourself. You know what? I, I firmly believe that everybody knows somebody with an old car. Sometimes it doesn't come to them right away, but just talk to everybody you know. Happy hunting.